Hi, I just have two questions. One, you mentioned earlier that when it comes to the characters that you were given, you were you could choose the characters that you were. What about the characters that like you voiced in the original G1 cartoon attracted you so much, especially with how different they are, like how different Skyfire is to Grimlock or how different Springer is to uh, Slag? Like, what about those characters uh, really appealed to you that you wanted to voice them? It's so hard to put into words, at least for me. I don't know about you, Greg. It's, it's just you look at the picture and then you see the dialogue that has been written, which gives you a clue into what the character is all about. And some, sometimes they speak to you and sometimes, sometimes you hear a voice in your head. And now the trick is can I reproduce that with my vocal cords? And in some cases you don't hear a voice. And, and that's been my experience. I don't know if you have a difference. Yeah, I, it's somewhere in the ethers. It either talks to you or it doesn't. And um, that same thing, you see all of, it's, it's, it's like if you were baking something and you see this list of ingredients and it turns you on or it doesn't. And you say, oh, I want to bake that. I want, I want to put those ingredients together and see what, what comes up. Um, but Grimlock had a small brain, big muscle, tail swipe, all this stuff, hinged jaw, and it just started painting a picture in my head. And, and Skyfire had this incredible nobility, and he was created this, and then buried in the ice, and discovered that, and it just turned me on. It, it just got me going. It, it's like that with everything, and, and some of these animated breakdowns are as three-dimensional as on-camera breakdowns, and we work in that community too. So you see them, and you can compare the breakdowns side by side. And the writers, uh, you know, all credit to the writers. They give you so much to chew on. They, they're really working on it long before you get there, and, and uh, all the editors and, and uh, other creatives are working on it long after you leave. But they give you a lot to chew on. And if it, it, it's the same. It's like any other relationship. It's like it either sparks you or it doesn't. And if it does, you know, run with that. Thank you. Yeah, all kudos to the writers, by the way. Uh, a lot of actors seem to think the script falls out of the ceiling five minutes before they show up, and that is not the case. Not at all. It is somebody staring at the most terrifying thing in the world, which is a blank screen or a blank piece of paper, and they've got to fill it up somehow. And the artists. That's, they give you so many clues. So you sort of feel your face morphing around that art and your body, you know, things start to happen. If you're an artist, if you're a creative, you start, you start to meld with the breakdown and the art, and, and it, it's, it's hard to talk about because it's so ethereal. It's, it, it, it either happens or it doesn't. That, that's what makes it creative. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Greg. Hi, Neil. Hello. Hope you're having a good day so far. Uh, I started to kneel again. <laughs> um, I just wanted to know, is there any people that you've worked with in the past on any project, whether celebrities or anyone you've looked up to, um, you've been so starstruck to work with Welcome. before? Oh, there you, oh, oh, the people there. Um, is there anyone that you've you've looked up to in the past as like an idol or someone you 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 just like and you've worked with them? Who is who? Who is it and why? Who have you been the most starstruck working with? Jeez, starstruck. Well, I I worked on a couple of movies, and uh, I got to work and meet uh, with Robert Redford, and then I did a. Uh, I'm visible just long enough in, in the movie Dick Tracy for my wife to go, oh, sweetie, I, oh. <laughs> uh, and, and, but, but that involved 12 hours on the set with Warren Beatty, which was an interesting experience. Wow. Uh, and and that, that is a little intimidating, although I must say, uh, people at that level are so secure and confident in themselves that they're a pleasure to work with. It's the middle level uh, pitchers you gotta worry about because their, their career is kind of stalled out and somebody is gonna pay for that and sometimes it's you. 
<laughs> so, but those were two in my case. And then, of course, the voice actors I worked with, uh, and I, uh, two that jumped to mind, but there are more. Uh, Rob Paulson oh, yeah. is so incredibly gifted and talented and amazing. And, and then, of course, Frank Welker. And I had no idea who Frank was when I first started working with him. Hopefully most of you people do know who Frank Welker is. <laughs> I, I suggest if you don't that you IMDB him and be prepared to look at a lot of credits. He's on my phone case. He's on my phone case. I've got a picture of him on my phone case. There you go. And, uh, you know, I started working with Frank. I had no idea who he was, you know. And then I went to another show, and there he was. And then I went to a third show, and there he was. I said, are you in everything? He said, I hope so. Yeah. yeah. And then somebody took me aside and said, schmuck, don't you know who that is? That's Frank Bucker. So who, who, who did you say the other person was? I didn't, I didn't catch it. I'm sorry? Who did you say the other person was that you, you enjoyed working with aside from Frank? Uh, I mean, Rob Paulson. Rob Paulson, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. he's a, a phenomenal. And, I'm, uh, you know, there, there's so many. It's been a, a, an absolute joy. I'm sure Greg will, will, will agree with me in that the voice acting community is such a wonderful group of people that I always say I, I spent however many years in that business and there's like maybe one and a half people that kind of rub me the wrong way. I mean, 99.9% .9 of the voice actors are just a joy to work with and, mm -hmm. and know. Couldn't agree more. And I could probably fill the rest of the hour with people. Um, I've brushed shoulders with an awful lot of people that impressed him. Huh, I got to stop using the P words. Uh, um, but I mean, Jonathan Winters, Stan Freeberg, June Ferre, um they're just, uh, and, and their reputation precedes them. These are, these are legacy giants. And that's deep, intensive uh, work with. But um, from a not work with standpoint, uh, during Transformers, the, uh, the animated feature, uh, we were, I don't know if you were there that day, but uh, we didn't work with him, but we were all there the day that Orson Welles arrived, or at least I was, and a lot of people were, arrived to do his recording as Unicron, and uh, he was recording at Wally Burr North, uh, South, and we were all at Wally Burr North, which had Venetian blinds, and there were like I don't know how many pairs of eyes peeking out of Venetian blinds as he arrived. Were you there? At no, that no. Arrival day? no I just well, about a big limousine arrived, and the door of the limousine opened, but he wasn't in the limousine. The, in the limousine, they took out a wheelchair and opened it up, and then a Buick, Buick Riviera pulled in after the limousine, and he was helped out of the Buick Riviera and put into the wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> and then went in and, uh, but that was, that was a starstruck moment. As far as interpersonal and work with, work with, work with, I worked in a play uh, that was part of an evening of three plays with John Cassavetes and his wife Jenna Rollins and that was weeks and weeks and weeks of uh, uh, work that blew my mind because all we did was wait for him to stop uh, directing and just sort of lay on the table and schmooze about the state of things and philosophy and everything else. And that was an extraordinary artistic, creative experience I'll never forget for the rest of my life. Christopher Lee for uh, eight weeks in Moscow on a movie on location that I was with. Uh, you know, I got, I got a really long list and I can if time permitted, tell you exactly, you know, how I was influenced by those people, but I was influenced by those people. And there's a tendency when you're kind of starstruck to, to, to shrink away, and I didn't allow myself to do that, and because I didn't allow myself to do that, I really, really grew from the experience of working with. Do you know what I'm saying? there's a tendency to kind of get small around people who have reputations like that. And then you kind of don't, you don't have the opportunity that you would otherwise have. Wonderful, thank you for answering my question. And Frank Welker, oh. thanks Amber. Woo! <laughs> well thank you for answering my question, I hope to see you later. Thanks Amber. You're welcome. <clears throat>
Hi, Mr. Greg. Hi, Mr. Neal. My question was, just upon seeing all the characters you played in G1 on the screen, most of them in the movies were either mute or simply not present, with the exception of Skyfire. So were either of you disappointed that you were never asked to voice, reprise any of those roles? or? Um well, of course, the story of <coughs> Transformers the movie, what was going on behind the scenes, and we didn't realize it, was they were going to kill off all our characters and replace them with new characters so they could sell you folks more toys. <laughs> So we show up, I'm going to be in the movie. And then you start looking at the script and go, where the hell are my lines? And then you hear somebody in the corner going, I die? Wait a minute. <laughs> you know. And I kind of lucked out in that I played this character named Springer. And looking back, I don't know why they didn't, what they did was they replaced, they, they put celebrities in the movie. And then the plan was, when the TV series happened, all these new characters that had been played by celebrities would be played by one of us plain rap voiceover actors. So why they didn't give Springer to a celebrity, I don't know, because it was a fairly big role. And so I kind of lucked out on that one. I, 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 I was quite happy with Springer. But yes, the other characters I did had one or two lines. I don't know if any of them died, per se, but... Yeah, that was a, that was kind of a shock. Uh, to Neil's point, uh, if any of if you're interested in that, there's a one o'clock writers panel. Um, that's where you would really ask that question. But everything Neil said is correct. Uh, structurally, there was there they were moving a lot of characters out. Obviously, when we all got our scripts, you could hear people flipping through, looking for their characters and and saying what Neil just said. Um, but uh, it's a writer's question, not an actor's question. In the moment, of course, absolutely, uh, you 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 long to, to be in it and be a part of it and know that you're going to be included. You don't know that it's going to have longevity uh, 40 years later that people are still going to be going to Fathom events and throwing popcorn in a movie theater and, and making it like a Rocky Horror Picture Show experience. But here we are and it's great every time. And um, geez, it's, it's just beautiful. The, the longevity that any of this stuff has is, is absolutely blows my mind. Fantastic. And it's because of fandom. That's the only reason. There's been so many. This is the most nurturing fandom through twists and turns and realignments and new incarnations and, uh, you know, re, re, re introductions of previous generations and, you know, parents introducing their kids and uh, people jumping in like at Prime and then seeing G1 and wanting to go along for that ride. It's amazing. Uh, anyway, that is a major thank you to you. you can do this.